Lawrence continues to pound the Carolinas. Over 600,000 are now without power. The number of businesses destroyed, the, uh, homes crushed, unbelievable amount of flooding. We saw some roofs taken off the roads, treacherous. No way to get in or out of this island. The storm turned deadly. Officials in North Carolina blaming Florence for at least four deaths, among them a mother and infant child. Most of the people did get out. Some have stayed. It'd be like getting into a barrel and getting ready to go over to Niagara Falls thinking you're going to live. I was like, what have I done? What kind of stupid thing have I done? The mayor tells us they are receiving hundreds and hundreds of 911 calls. Help is coming from around the country. At least 19 different states sending swift boat rescue teams. That military ethic. What's the mission? We've got to get it accomplished. But we're pulling side by side, be able to save people's lives. We begin this Fox and Friends with a Fox News alert. Catastrophic flooding slamming the Carolinas, turning towns into raging rivers. Almost one million people in the dark power is out. Massive power outages across the coast. Tropical storm Florence, now deadly, unfortunately, claiming at least five lives including a mother and her infant child. Firefighters praying after finding the family crushed by a fallen wow. tree. Wow. Dramatic rescues in New Bern, North Carolina, still going on where dozens underestimated the monster storm. It was so hard. The waters yeah. were so hard that trying to get out, we got thrown into trailers, we got thrown into mailboxes, houses. There this are morning, people there still waiting to be rescued. Yeah. They really are. We have live team coverage across the coast. Griff Jenkins and Todd Pyro are in the disaster zone. And Rick Freikin is tracking the storm in the Weather Center. We begin with Griff in Moorhead City, just south of the Outer Banks. Griff. Good morning, guys. We're in Moorhead City. Let me just give you a little look at the wind damage. We've talked a lot about the rain coming. We're getting a reprieve right now. It's very welcome, but this gas station just ripped from its foundation, and it looks much like this Highway 70. We've driven up and down it here in Moorhead City. The houses are destroyed. Businesses have roofs ripped off, and you've got power lines down everywhere, and even trees uprooted, but about 40 miles northwest of here in New Bern, I've been talking to officials all night. They tell me that they're currently actively trying to rescue about 100 people right now. The number they say they rescued yesterday was 375. One of the major problems they have right now is where to put the people that they are rescuing after that Noose River crested at record flooding levels and it's going to continue to do so when more rain comes. They're putting people at the Marine Corps Air Station Cherry Point nearby as a solution right now. But the Highway 70 that I'm on right now is flooded in several areas and just north of New Bern the major city of Greenville is cut off New Bern from a major resource center. And, you know, we, we got those videos yesterday, guys. This one woman, Sadie Holt, the video of her being rescued really tells the story of what it's like to be in this situation. Take a listen. I stayed because we didn't anticipate it to be as bad as it was. We started getting flooding in the house last night, probably about 10, I think it was. And it started coming in, and, and the water was just coming up higher and higher, and it was getting so bad that we physically took a boat we had in the yard. And here in Moorhead City, the side streets are flooded as well. A little bit of good news, guys. Atlantic Beach, the barrier island here just uh, parallel to us in Moorhead City. The mayor, Trace Cooper, texted me just a few moments ago saying, Griff, I want to give you a little bit of good news. While we have catastrophic flooding and a ton of damage, we had zero casualties and very few people were even injured. It's just going to be a nasty cleanup. And really, with the emergency crews and the power companies right now, they just hope Mother Nature will cooperate some, but as you're going to find out, we've got a lot of rain in the forecast. By the way, we are all morning long from Moorhead going to try and move towards New Bern to get you some more of these images. We'll be back with a lot more of that. Stay with us. All Thank right. you, Griff. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Totally. Keep going Absolutely. back to the long morning. You know, in New Bern, you, you, could, you, you can't totally blame these residents for being a little bit surprised. They're on a river. They're not on the coast. Mm -hmm. The swell came quickly and fast. And so they probably thought, I'm not on the coast, I'm not, right. and there were still evacuation warnings, mm -hmm. but it came quick, and that river can't hold it all. And as the sun comes up this morning, we're going to be able to see yeah. really what the damage is to, to the buildings overnight uh, as the storm Absolutely. continues to move extremely slowly while it continues to dump all that rain into these rivers uh, and tributaries outside of the coastline. That's a good way to put it. It comes extremely slowly, but mm -hmm. it comes big. Right.
Right. Well, yeah, there are some people, residents of New Bern, I'm seeing online, who are saying that the water did come in quickly to their homes. Uh, and at one point, within moments, they had water up to their waist. Yeah. And then next thing you know, the water is fo much further up their body, getting close to their head. They had to go up to the attic. Yeah, yeah. we just so want to give you. So when people's homes are getting flooded, you know, they're calling 911 and, and looking for rescues. We have some numbers here for you. 375 people were rescued. 100 rescues were underway overnight that's and that is what the mayor was the mayors of these towns are worried about is all these 911 calls coming in mm -hmm. uh, while the storm was still pounding and dumping buckets and buckets of that you rain. know it shows you that you they were prepared when it comes no casualties right. you know seems fairly orderly they got these people out it's yeah the city of newburn by the way online on twitter they're saying that they've got about 30,000 residents yeah. and 21,000 don't have power mm -hmm. so obviously yeah. a whole bunch of those folks are not there right now they did evacuate but Almost the entire city doesn't have power. Without power. Yeah, almost a million folks in the Carolinas without power this morning. We're going to go now to South Carolina, feeling the wrath of the slow-moving storm, dumping heavy rainfall and bringing big winds. Continuing our team coverage, Todd Pirro is live in Myrtle Beach, where more than 130,000 people are without power this morning. Todd. Yeah, good morning, guys. Pete, you just said it. Power is the name of the game here. The winds really have died down. The rain, sometimes it's coming down in buckets. Other times it's a light drizzle like it is now. But this is the issue. Downed power lines. Take a look at that. We've seen this scene throughout North Myrtle Beach. Obviously, AJ is going to stay away. AJ's photographing right now. He's going to stay away from the power line. Just wanted to show you that it is down. Like you said, between 130, we're seeing reports of up to 170,000 customers without power here in South Carolina. North Myrtle Beach, where we are really out of all the Carolina, out of all South Carolina, I should say, has gotten hit the hardest. What they're expecting, though, hasn't yet happened. They are expecting massive amounts of flooding. We've driven around. We've been in touch with the town. We've asked, hey, where is the major flooding? And quite frankly, so far, we haven't seen it. That's the good news, the bad news. If you look at any forecast, the rain that we are expecting is between 8 and 12 inches between now and Tuesday. That's not counting what the ground has received so far. Ground already saturated, even though you may not be seeing flooding, you are seeing ponding and therefore there is a flash flood warning up into effect until Tuesday. Now think about that. Many people, rightly or wrongly, are thinking, ah, the storm is done. Not so. This thing's moving between three and five miles an hour. One. Two. It's Saturday. Tuesday is four days away, so you can think about how a saturated ground is going to have to handle all that rain that's coming with this slow-moving storm. Granted, not a hurricane anymore, only a tropical storm, but keep that in mind. And, and with the rain still coming, with the wind still around, although not as bad, but still around, when are these crews going to be able to get out and fix the power? So the concern really is right now, we're going to be without power for a while now. Wow. That's always the big question. Thank you, Todd Pirro. Really Todd, appreciate it. You. Appreciate it. All right. We're going to go to Rick now, who is uh, monitoring, obviously, the weather. He's been working around the clock. Rick, what are we seeing at this hour? Yeah, so still a long ways to go with this. Uh, primarily as a rain, the wind has come down, which is good news. Uh, the storm surge, a lot of the storm surge that came in, it just can't get out because the winds haven't shifted. Take a look at the map right behind me here, and you can see those little wind barbs. It's an onshore flow that continues to push. The storm surge that initially arrived when the storm arrived, that water goes in, and it can't really get out because the wind continues to push it toward land. Then the rain that falls, it wants to get off. That's where we're going to be watching the big flooding problems. Uh, center of the storm now to the southwest of Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach had an offshore flow, meaning the water, uh, the wind was pushing the ocean away from the town. <coughs> Excuse me. For the... <coughs> Excuse me. For the better part uh, of all the yesterday and the better part of last night, now that has swished around. So you're going to start to see when the tide comes up, uh, that water push in a little bit as well. Overall, though, you see that deep orange color that's really rich moisture that is going to still continue to fall on areas that have already seen over 20 inches. We have some spots uh, at almost 24 inches at last recording. 20, just over 24 inches is the most they've ever seen from any tropical storm. So uh, this will for certain break the record. Uh, probably some spots in 
another 10 to 15 inches of rain. Take a look at the radar picture here and the flooding threat. Anywhere you see those red boxes, that's flash flooding that's going on right now. If you have rain that falls in one spot but you're not by a river, it wants to go somewhere. So all of that is going to funnel into rivers. And where right now we don't have many rivers that are in flood stage, this is five days. Now four days from now, take a look at that. We've got uh, about 20 gauges that are going to be at their major flooding stage and many of those at record flooding. Some saw record flooding they'd ever seen with Hurricane Matthew just a couple of years ago. This will be higher than that. You know the damage that that brought with Hurricane Matthew. You can expect to see situations worse than that by the time we get towards, say, Tuesday. Guys? All right, Rick. Rick, thank you Rick, so thank much. Thank you very much. All right, turning now to some headlines, we begin first with the Fox News alert. The mother of a child murdered by MS-13 gang members has been killed in a car accident or by a car at her daughter's memorial. Evelyn Rodriguez was fatally struck after a confrontation with a neighbor two years to the day that her daughter was brutally stabbed to death. She was preparing for a vigil honoring her daughter, 16-year-old Kayla Cuevas, advocating against the gang violence. Rodriguez joined us on Fox & Friends several times with a clear message. We shouldn't be tolerating this type of behavior at all whatsoever. I mean, you know, he's a kids, kids kidding, you know, kids. That shouldn't be tolerated at all. President Trump invited Rodriguez to his State of the Union address. President Trump tweeting, my thoughts and prayers are with Evelyn Rodriguez this evening, along with her family and friends. It's awful. For more breaking news, a Texas police officer passes away overnight after getting shot in the line of duty. Fort Worth officer Garrett Hull was killed during a shootout with robbery suspects. Police say Deshaun Steptoe shot Hull while running from officers after robbing a bar. Cops on scene fired back and killed Steptoe. Hull is a 17-year department veteran. He leaves behind a wife and two daughters. Now, former Trump campaign chairman Paul Manafort has struck a deal, Manafort pleading guilty and agreeing to cooperate with special counsel Robert Mueller. The plea bargain relating to charges involving his work consulting foreign governments and allows Manafort to skirt a second trial. The White House says the deal is totally unrelated to the president. And a flurry of deadly gas explosions prompt a state of emergency in Massachusetts. One person was killed and at least 25 others were injured following a series of blasts in more than 60 homes north of Boston. The governor removing the company behind the explosions from local operations and putting another in charge of the response. Experts believe overpressurization of gas lines may be to blame. Oh. And mm. those are your headlines. Those Talk about something you don't even think about yeah. and yeah. suddenly... Awful, awful news. All right, we will be staying on top of the tropical storm, but there's a lot of other news. We're going to be getting to that throughout the morning, including Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has a direct, blunt message for John Kerry about his meetings with Iran. This is a former Secretary of State engaged with the world's largest state sponsor of terror. It is beyond inappropriate. Well, John Kerry is firing back his meltdown just ahead. I look forward to that. And <laughs> the mayor of Atlantic Beach, North Carolina, says Florence was the worst he's seen in his 11 years as mayor. He joins us live with an update coming up next. We are back. Uh, Tropical Storm Florence still wreaking havoc on the Carolinas as cities still face widespread flooding and heavy wind damage. And Trace Cooper is the mayor of Atlantic Beach, North Carolina. He joins us live now with an update on the damage to his city. Uh, Mr. Mayor, thanks for joining us under these difficult circumstances. Obviously, our, our hearts are with everyone uh, in your city this morning. Please give us an update on where you are. Or do people still need to be rescued? What kind of damage are you seeing on the ground? No, from the, the human safety standpoint, we came out of this storm in a really good place. Um, I think the overwhelming majority of our of our visitors and citizens evacuated. So throughout the two days of the storm, uh, we had very few calls to our first responders. So uh, you know, from a safety point standpoint, I think everybody made it out, out okay, and, and that's the most important thing. And then, what about the damage that you have a historic pier there? Uh, there was a lot of fear about uh, that. Uh, talk about the damage around the city as well. Yeah, the, uh, that pier is actually something that my grandfather uh, opened in, back in 1959 and is still in our family. This isn't the, the first time it's been knocked down by a storm, and I'm, I'm hopeful we'll be able to rebuild that. Mm. Uh, but throughout town, the damage is, for the most part, uh, superficial. Uh, roofs and shingles blown off, siding blown off. 
um, but not too many buildings completely destroyed, although we do have some, unfortunately. Mr. Mayor, talk to us about the power situation. Are the lights on? Uh, when will they be on? What's happening there? No, we're, we, we've been without power since uh, Thursday at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, you know, th this storm hit a lot of the coast of North Carolina, South Carolina that are served by si some of the same utilities. So uh, they've got their hands full right now, and I, we're not sure when it'll come back on. And that's a real limiting factor for our letting our citizens back into town. So, Mayor Cooper, what is the long-term plan and strategy to deal with the aftermath of the storm, considering that everybody's saying it's, it's sitting, it's taking a long time to move through the area? Uh, what is the, the plan to make sure that residents uh, can eventually get back into their homes and assess the damage? Well, once we got through the, the worst of the storm yesterday, you know, our, our town department heads got together and started planning for the recovery so that as soon as the weather breaks, um, we could hit the streets, start pulling trees and things out of the streets, start uh, trying to remove power lines and getting it safe so that our residents can get back into their house. Uh, so far today, it's still kind of windy, but we haven't had much rain this morning. So I'm, I haven't seen a radar, but I'm hopeful the, the rain will hold off for a day or so and we can start uh, making the streets safe. All right, Mayor Cooper, we're hoping for the best as well. Thanks for that update. Uh, and obviously the sun will be coming up uh, later yeah. this hour. And so we saw he mentioned that pier has come down. You've been seeing video of it sort of teetering. So now that the sun's coming up, we'll see yeah. just how it did fall down. Mr. Mayor, uh, thanks. We hope to get back to you throughout Thank you, the sir. morning. Thanks a lot. You got it. Well, the New York Times claiming U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley has $58,000 curtains, hmm. but there's a big detail that they've been leaving out. Yeah, maybe not. Could you even pay $58,000 for curtains? <laughs> it's the government. Don't yes, underestimate that's, that's them. true. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> and the Louisiana Cajun Navy, my second, second favorite Navy, rushing to the rescue with volunteers going door to door, saving people in the Carolinas. And they're even getting praise from President Trump. A member of the volunteer group joins us live. Coming up next. And we're back with the Fox News alert, Hurricane Florence claiming at least five lives in the Carolinas, and the nightmare is far from over. The storm still pounding the coast with rain, heavy winds prompting catastrophic flood warnings, and people are very worried about that this morning. That's right. Our own Lauren Blanchard is in the impact zone in Wilmington, North Carolina. Lauren, good morning. Good morning, Ed, Pete, Katie. Yeah, we're still getting rain here in Wilmington. The winds have let up a bit. It is now a tropical storm, uh, but by tonight, experts are saying, or forecasters are saying, Florence could be a tropical depression. Winds right now about 50 miles an hour, and it is moving very slowly, only at about five miles an hour. But the damage uh, definitely being seen here in Wilmington and also along the coast of North and South Carolina. Uh, as you were mentioning, those five deaths, four of them uh, caused directly by the storm. Uh, very sad. A woman and her infant were killed when a tree fell on their home. The husband uh, transported to the hospital with injuries. We don't have an update on him just yet. There was also a report of a woman who uh, had a medical emergency and she was unable to get first responders to her because of blocked roadways. Uh, so this storm taking a very deadly toll. Listen to what the North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper describes it as. Hurricane Florence is powerful, slow, and relentless. It's an uninvited brute who doesn't want to leave. And the flooding is expected to continue. This area that I'm in right now, you can kind of see uh, if some of this debris that's out here. This area flooded all yesterday. Uh, we are expecting, once that tide comes back in, we are expecting it to flood once again. Because Florence is moving so slowly, uh, it is just dumping a torrential amount of rain on these areas, flooding the rivers and streams, maybe even up to 18 trillion gallons of water uh, over every state that is within its path. Ed, Pete, Katie, You just wow. said 18 trillion, trillion? gallons? Trillion? Unbelievable. Yeah, that's what that's experts amazing. are estimating for all those states within the path. Ooh, I can't right. even I can't even fathom. Wow. Yeah, that's a lot. Wow. All right. All right. We'll, well be Lauren, getting back thank to you. Thank you, Lauren. Appreciate it. All right. Well, the Louisiana
Cajun Navy has become famous for volunteering to help Americans in immediate hurricane danger. And yesterday, the group came to the rescue of an elderly man in Burn, North Carolina. They sent hundreds of boats to the Carolinas to assist. These are the brave Americans that are running to the areas where people had to evacuate. And joining us now is Jordan Bloodsworth. He is with the Cajun Navy. Good morning, Jordan, and, and you're joining us by phone. Uh, tell us about some of the efforts uh, that uh, you're in the middle of uh, at this hour as, as many on the East Coast wake up. Right now, we are in Wilmington, just trying to get ready to assess things this morning. Since we found a little church, we were able to take shelter at for the night and kind of ride it out since they put the uh, curfew in effect on us. Jordan, you know, yesterday we spoke to you on the program. You were in your hotel room. You said you were headed to New Bern. You were there yesterday. That's the images we're watching right now, is the, your, your efforts and the efforts of the folks in the Cajun Navy to, to rescue people. How do you ident so t talk to us about yesterday and what do you anticipate today? Yesterday we got up and went over to New Bern right after I left you guys. Um, we got there, they were requesting help for rescues. Once we got there, they said that the local agencies and fire department and so on were going to wrap up everything that was going on. They were able to handle it, that they were just going to take control of it and they weren't needing any other outside help. So we just decided to move on over to Wilmington where we knew there was going to be some more need. Um, we came over here, kind of got set up, and just trying to learn the area and see where we might be needed. Jordan, has it been easy to work with local officials? We've seen reports that you, that you were asked to leave the area because they said they had everything under control, but then we see that hundreds of 911 calls for rescues were coming in. Can you talk about maybe the discrepancy <coughs> there or, or confirm or deny those reports? We weren't asked to leave. When we got there, it just seemed that there wasn't much to do, so we thought that gotcha. it would be better for us to take our resources elsewhere. Um, if they had it under control, then that's great yeah it's even better well so they uh, said you know we have it so we said all right we're gonna head out jordan so you're in wilmington this morning keep us posted if if uh, as the the lights come on there uh, proverbially that you, what you're doing and, and if you're involved in things let us know but the president clearly taking notice he tweeted we love the cajun navy thank you very much so uh, our thanks as well to you jordan uh, we all appreciate right, your efforts Thank you very much. I'll keep you guys posted on uh, what happens once daylight comes and we can kind of assess some of these rivers that we're watching. Around. All right, we'll be all over that. Yep. Get that daylight later this hour. In the meantime, we have another Fox News alert. A manhunt intensifying this morning for a convicted murderer who escaped from prison. And get this, it's not the first time he got out. Oh, great. Plus, John Kerry on the defensive, rightfully so, about his meetings with Iran. And this morning, he's comparing the president to a teenage girl. Like, Boy. really? I couldn't yeah. even read it. Like, really? <laughs> like, really? Former top diplomat, everybody. Mm. We're back with the Fox News Alert. Rescue teams working at this hour to save hundreds of people trapped in rising floodwaters from Tropical Storm Florence. Look at this. Look how high this is now. It's twice as deep as it was 10 minutes ago. Tropical Storm Florence drenching the Carolinas with life-threatening storm surges. People racing to the second floor, in some cases their attic of their homes as waters quickly rise. Nearly one million people now without power as outages spread across the coast. That's right. Well, the monster storm putting parts of North Carolina, as we said, underwater. Jonathan Cherry is live right now in Wrightsville Beach where high tides are already breaking records. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning to you. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration keeps records. They have gauges throughout the region. In fact, NOAA has a gauge here on Wrightsville Beach that uh, during the storm, just before the eye came, was measuring uh, 4.11 feet above what would typically be the water level at high tide. That is a record that breaks the record set by Hurricane Joaquin back in 2015. Uh, the lights on the island are still out. I'm uh, illuminated by battery power lights that we brought on the island, but if you look in either direction from me, it's still very dark. That'll change as the sun comes up, allowing officials to continue assessing the damage. But for now, they are keeping residents and visitors off the island not allowing them to return just yet until they determine that it's safe to do so. Back to you guys. Or a MAGA guy. <laughs> All right.
We appreciate Thank it very much. Let's appreciate now go to meteorologist Rick Reichmuth, who's tracking Florence as it slowly crawls its way across Carolinas. Rick, what are we seeing as uh, people wake up on the East Coast this morning? So I, one thing I know you guys said is like when the sun comes up and people get out there, we're, it, that's not going to be the case with this storm. In fact, the sun came up yesterday in the middle of the storm. Couldn't get out there at all today. The rain continues, so it's going to be hard to get out there and assess a lot of the damage. More rain to be had. This is the rain that's coming in uh, throughout the remainder of the day. This is just one forecast model. The bulk of it, though, likely a little bit farther south than where we saw it yesterday. Uh, this is a radar picture, and you see all of those areas that are kind of uh, surrounded there in, in red. That's where flash flooding is going on. Currently, you have flash flooding. Eventually, you end up with river flooding as that water flows into the bigger streams. Uh, and we still have that onshore flow, meaning the, the wind continuing to push towards the ocean or towards the shore, and that doesn't allow that storm surge to back off, and it's not going to allow it to do that uh, for quite a quite a while here. In fact, probably a couple of days still yet. A lot of spots well over 20 inches of rain. 24 is the record they've ever seen from any storm. And here's what's going to happen. It will by tomorrow move a little bit more and then Monday it moves out. But with that trajectory, it still continues to pull some moisture up. So we'll see bands of heavy rain all the way through Tuesday across parts of the Carolinas. Tomorrow morning, this storm will still be sitting on South Carolina. Yes. That's it's amazing. Right. Yeah, it, that and is what how about what Todd is. Pyro was reporting earlier, Rick, that some people in Myrtle Beach are saying that there's forecast that it could still be raining heavily, not just a little, but, but raining heavily, not a, a tropical storm, but raining heavily as far as Tuesday or beyond. Yeah, that's exactly what I was just saying, that there will still be rain on Tuesday uh, across parts of the Carolinas wow. from this. Be just because of the way the rotation of the storm uh, goes, you see this band right here? There's that band that's going towards Wilmington. Yeah. Very heavy band there. That's very far away from the center. And if you notice, it's moving in the same direction. So if you're underneath that band, you will continue to get the rain. Mm -hmm. Maybe you sit under that band for six hours and you get eight to ten inches of rain. Yeah. That's why we're nowhere near done with this flooding. Well, wow. Rick, thanks a lot. Yeah. All right, well, turning now to your headlines, we begin with the Fox News alert. An intense manhunt is underway for a convicted killer. Officials searching for Arnold Nash, who escaped from a prison in Maine. He was last seen wearing blue jeans and a light blue shirt and should be considered dangerous. Nash was serving a 45-year sentence for murder and robbery and was scheduled to be released next year. This is his third time escaping a facility. And 65 women stepping forward to defend President Trump's Supreme Court nominee, Brett Kavanaugh. A letter sent to the Senate states in part, through the more than 35 years we have known him, Brett has stood out for his friendship, character, and integrity. This after Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein reported an allegation against Kavanaugh to the FBI, an unidentified woman accusing Kavanaugh of sexually assaulting her during a high school party. Kavanaugh denies it. The Senate Judiciary Committee is expected to vote on his candidacy on Thursday. And the New York Times walking back a false story about Nikki Haley, the paper accusing the UN Ambassador Haley of lavish spending that was actually authorized by the Obama administration. The Times originally reported that Haley spent over $50,000 in taxpayer funds on curtains for her New York City apartment. Plans to purchase the curtains were actually made during the previous administration and had nothing to do they with Ambassador Haley. They quoted an Obama White House official <laughs> anonymously story, saying this was outrageous. Minor yes. detail. Minor yes. details about those things. And then there's this Twitter CEO admitting conservative employees don't feel safe expressing their views at the company. They do feel silenced um, by just the general swirl of what they perceive to be the broader percentage of leanings within the company. Mm -hmm. And I don't, you know, I don't think that's fair or right. We, we should make sure that everyone feels safe to express themselves within the company. Not a safe space, apparently. Jack Dorsey <laughs> recently defending Twitter on Capitol Hill over accusations that the social media platform is biased towards Republicans. How many, how many ways can you say it? The general swirl, the general swirl yeah. of the Pete, company's view happens to not be any conservative. Is there a general swirl at Google, too, where they have those big meetings after the election? The general crying. swirl yeah. of... Okay. So, you know, we had an election in 2016, right? Which means a new <laughs> yes. president came in with a new secretary of state. Yeah, it's not John Kerry anymore, right? with advancing our foreign policy, right? right? Yeah. Which we... Mike which Pompeo. People voted for. Apparently, John Kerry did not get the memo because he's still meeting with 
leaders of Iran. He's met with the Iranian foreign minister, I think, three or four times. And yeah. uh, former Obama administration officials to try and undermine President Trump's policy, specifically when it comes to the Iran nuclear agreement. That's right. So sec Secretary of State, the current, the, the real yeah, Secretary of State, uh, Mike Pompeo, took issue with it. And this is what he said yesterday about John Kerry. What Secretary Kerry has done is unseemly and unprecedented. This is a former Secretary of State engaged with the world's largest state sponsor of terror. He was telling them to wait out this administration. You can't find precedent for this in U.S. history. It's inconsistent with what the foreign policy of the United States is as directed by this president, and it is beyond inappropriate. For him I'll to tell you this, there's no chance a Secretary of State wants to go to his own podium and have to address a previous Secretary of right. State's right. conduct. He didn't want to do that. Well, we he felt like he had to. Our own Dana Perino did a great job because it was on the daily briefing that John Kerry, she pressed him about this, got him on record, he's on his book tour, and he admitted, yes, I've had all these meetings with yeah. the Iranians and other leaders, in fact. Now, where he was claiming, John Kerry, in that interview with Dana, that this happens with former se Secretaries. They do stay yeah, on the world no. stage. But <laughs> if they, they have meetings, no. They usually would be sort of helping U.S. foreign policy, yeah. not undermining. I think that's the point. Yes, you can still have meetings, but are you undermining the current administration? Well, while he's undermining yeah. the president in meeting with Iranian officials, John Kerry is now attacking President Trump and comparing him to a teenage girl. Mm -hmm. The first president that I know of who spends more time reading his Twitter likes <laughs> than his briefing books or the Constitution of the United States. Yeah, yeah. He really is the rare combination of a eight-year-old boy. I mean, he's got the maturity of an eight-year-old boy with the insecurity of a teenage girl. So, I, so I've got an eight-year-old boy. Whoa. I would not make him president. <laughs> I mean, the reality is, is this is so tired and absurd. It's the typical name calling that the left has resorted to and because it's dangerous. they hate this president. It's very it's dangerous. dangerous. This is the, the Iran nuclear agreement. Iran is the, as, as Secretary Pompeo said yesterday, is the largest state sponsor of terrorism in the world. They're anti-American. Yeah. They're, they're funding Hezbollah, Hamas against American yeah. interests. And, you know, this is a real problem. And yet John Kerry is going a late and night. John Kerry is leaving the door it. open to running for president against President Trump. Try that kind of rhetoric against President Trump. That would be interesting yep. debate. But John, also, John Kerry reporting for duty once again, and America doesn't want you. All President once again. Trump has to do is, okay, what was your policy in Syria? What did you do in North Korea? Exactly. As Secretary of State? Well, why is like, John the world Kerry, was so great when you were in charge. Yeah. Why is John Kerry fraternizing with the enemy and undermining the United totally. States as a result? You're right. We haven't question. heard the last of the story for sure. Pompeo, Secretary Pompeo, that was a tough talk. Good for him. I think Good that was him. the beginning, too. I think we're going to see more about that for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. All right. Hundreds of South Carolina National Guard soldiers deployed as conditions worsen in the State. One of their commanders will tell us how they're responding next hour. Plus, military veterans with Team Rubicon now on the ground in, in the Carolinas as the storm pummels the region. We're going to catch up with them and what they're doing coming up next. Welcome back. Well, the storm, as you know, rages on, but our military veterans with Team Rubicon are already on the ground in the Carolinas preparing for Florence recovery. Joining us now is Marine and Vice President of Programs and Field Operations for Team Rubicon, a nonprofit made up of military veterans, David Burke. David, thank you so much for being here. Um, tell us what you're seeing on the ground and what you're ready to do as the sun comes up and we see some of the damage that has occurred overnight. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, the team here with me in Fayetteville, North Carolina, made it down to the Wilmington area yesterday. We wanted to confirm reports and understand the impact of kind of where the eye made landfall, where the highest winds were reported. And we got to see what the Wilmington area looked like before the rains picked up again in the later evening hours. And uh, there's significant damage, significant trees down all over the Wilmington, North Carolina area. And... Um, as we've seen the rains pick up and the flooding continue, Team Rubicon has pre-positioned personnel and equipment in the Charlotte area, and the team here in Fayetteville is ready to move back out and continue to do assessments, David, um, support for, requests. For, for, for our viewers who don't know about Team Rubicon, tell us about the mission and, and why you rush to areas like this. Yeah, so Team Rubicon unites the skills and experiences of military veterans and first responders to deploy emergency response teams. And 
what we found across the country is that uh, the scope and scale of disasters is increasing over time and the people that need help uh, are increasing over time and the skills and experiences that military veterans can bring to the table in the aftermath of disasters are uh, very applicable yeah. and pertinent and can help people return to normal a little bit more quickly. So we've had over the last eight years over 80,000 military veterans, first responders and civilians register as volunteers just raising their hand to say, hey, we're here to help uh, in the aftermath of the event once it's safe and we can get in and, and get people uh, on the path back to normal. So the teams are ready to help with everything from heavy equipment to removal to support route clearance if we get requested, uh, all the way down to direct muck out and gut out of flood-affected homes wow. and really everything in between. Well, David, that's awesome that you're still serving our nation and helping so many people. Uh, talk a little bit about working with the federal government and local authorities. On one hand, you have the president has been talking about this for days. The governors in the affected states have been you know, getting people to evacuate and warning everyone. But despite all the warnings, all the preparations, we keep hearing from our reporting that this is unprecedented in terms of, you know, rainfall over 20, 30 inches in some places uh, over the, currently, but also in the days ahead. People, you know, in Myrtle Beach are going to have heavy rain until Tuesday. All the preparation in the world can't really prepare you for that. No, I don't think all the preparation can really get anybody 100 percent ready. And um, as we see the storm downgrade over the last week and we see um, other other news start to emerge and less interest on the storm. I think what's really important for people to hear is that the storm is going to affect a huge a huge area and it's going to go well beyond the coastal areas and support's going to be required for community and volunteer organizations to help homeowners get back to normal. Yeah. Um, well after this storm leaves the news cycle. Well, David, as we say in the military, no plan survives first contact with the enemy. No plan survives first contact with an unpredictable weather storm. And that's why having vets there who know how to react to that is a big uh, game changer. David Burke, thank you. It's teamrubiconusa.org if folks want to donate and become a part of the organization. Uh, thank God for guys like this. Yeah, thanks for all you're doing. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. They play a really thank important you. role, that's for sure. Thank you so much. Straight ahead of Fox News Alert, a mother... A mother whose daughter was murdered by MS-13 now killed at her daughter's memorial exactly two years after she was found. The developing details of this tragedy are coming up. Wow. And as Florence sparks massive flooding concerns, Kurt the Cyber Guy is here with the apps to keep everyone updated to make sure you, you and your family stay safe during the storm and the upcoming storms in the weeks ahead. There's going to be more this fall. Kurt has all those details next. Welcome back. Well, the storm, as you know, rages on, but our military veterans with Team Rubicon are already on the ground in the Carolinas preparing for Florence recovery. Joining us now is Marine and Vice President of Programs and Field Operations for Team Rubicon, a nonprofit made up of military veterans, David Burke. David, thank you so much for being here. Um, tell us what you're seeing on the ground and what you're ready to do as the sun comes up and we see some of the damage that has occurred overnight. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, the team here with me in Fayetteville, North Carolina, made it down to the Wilmington area yesterday. We wanted to confirm reports and understand the impact of kind of where the eye made landfall, where the highest winds were reported. And we got to see what the Wilmington area looked like before the rains picked up again in the later evening hours. And uh, there's significant damage, significant trees down all over the Wilmington, North Carolina area. And... Um, as we've seen the rains pick up and the flooding continue, Team Rubicon has pre-positioned personnel and equipment in the Charlotte area, and the team here in Fayetteville is ready to move back out and continue to do assessments, David, um, support for, requests. For, for, for our viewers who don't know about Team Rubicon, tell us about the mission and, and why you rush to areas like this. Yeah, so Team Rubicon unites the skills and experiences of military veterans and first responders to deploy emergency response teams. And what we found across the country is that the, the scope and scale of 
disasters is increasing over time and the people that need help uh, are increasing over time and the skills and experiences that military veterans can bring to the table in the aftermath of disasters are uh, very applicable yeah. and pertinent and can help people return to normal a little bit more quickly. So we've had over the last eight years over 80,000 military veterans, first responders and civilians register as volunteers just raising their hand to say, hey, we're here to help uh, in the aftermath of the event. Once it's safe and we can get in and, and get people uh, on the path back to normal. So the teams are ready to help with everything from heavy equipment to removal to support route clearance if we get requested, uh, all the way down to direct muck out and gut out of flood affected homes. Wow and really everything in between. Well, David, that's awesome that you're still serving our nation and helping so many people. Uh, talk a little bit about working with the federal government and local authorities. On one hand, you have the president has been talking about this for days. The governors in the affected states have been you know, getting people to evacuate and warning everyone. But despite all the warnings, all the preparations, we keep hearing from our reporting that this is unprecedented in terms of you know, rainfall over 20, 30 inches in some places uh, over the, currently, but also in the days ahead. People you know, in Myrtle Beach are going to have heavy rain until Tuesday. All the preparation in the world can't really prepare you for that. No, I don't think all the preparation can really get anybody 100% ready. And um, as we see the storm downgrade over the last week and mm -hmm. we see um, 